Hello and welcome to the pit. I am Solin Outlander and I am playing King Arthur, the Fallen Champions and apparently I don't have a default. Ah, there we go. Rename profile. Solin, because that's me. Yes, I am playing the standalone expansion to King Arthur, the tactical role-playing war game of Total War. Uh, the tutorial in my testing is just the first couple of battles from King Arthur the role playing war game so no need to go through this new campaign uh, best choice if I am familiar but it's the first time playing the campaign yeah yeah I suppose I could always go very easy yeah right normal the great King Arthur has crushed his adversaries in the south, but the realm of the once and future king still has its limits. The lands beyond the forest of Bedegreen are wild, ruled by no one, haunted by the old gods who fought and bled here in times long past. This is the tale of three brave souls. Sir Lionel, a brave knight from Britannia, on a quest to rescue a damsel in distress before it's too late. Lady Corrigan of the She, a creature of the twilight seeking the secret pathways that could lead her back to her lost home of Turnelog. And dressed the Chosen, a shaman of the North, driven here by visions of greatness and the voices in the night. A mortal, an enchantress, and a prophet. These three will become champions of a forgotten battle that began long, long ago. Interesting. Yes. This expansion is less about building your kingdom and more about the story. Already I like this more than the standard King Arthur. Fallen Champions In Fallen Champions, you will explore the tales of three heroes as they struggle towards the crossroads of their destiny. When you select one, the next episode of their story becomes available, which you can commence by clicking on the relevant location on the map. Each episode consists of two parts, an adventure and a battle. The adventure lays forth the events that lead up to the battle in the form of a short, interactive story. After this, you will turn to command an army in combat. Once an episode is finished, you can freely switch to another hero or you can continue with the current hero as you please. Heroes gain skill and ability points before each battle, which you can distribute by accessing the character window during the mission briefing. Here you can also equip your heroes with various artifacts that you have previously acquired. So, yes, very much uh, interactive story thing. Dressed, Lady Corrigan and Sir Lionel. Or Lionel, or whatever. And as you can see from the map, so there's Sir Lionel and you can actually see the path that his storyline takes him. Goes up here and then goes across this big old hill to here and then curves around and oh look there's dressed so does that mean they both meet up at some point then and then there's Lady Corrigan here I think I will play Lady you Corrigan are Lady Corrigan the enchantress of the she and a member of the unseelie court you are a creature of mist and twilight respected and feared by the mortals they treat you as one of the fairies from their dark fables, which indeed you are. The glorious reign of King Arthur has put an end to the troubles between your kind and the mortals. You feel that your time in the mortal world is coming to an end, and you have decided to return home. But the crossing back to Turnernog is not so easy as it once was. The gates have long been closed. However, there are still ancient forests in Cumbria, where you might find your way home. 
the hearts of these deep woods still open into the other world of the Xi. So you must travel north, through the treacherous thickets and thorns, keeping clear of the abandoned keeps and stone temples. It will be a long, hard road through the darkness. I like how he's not quoting straight from that, he's more uh, summarising it. As I was saying, I will play Lady Corrigan first, then Dressed, then Sir Lionel. See if that or I swap between each one, but I figure I might as well go with one at a time so that I get the storyline without forgetting details. Hounds of Midnight, so your path goes all the way up here. And then what? The Hounds of Midnight. During your wanderings, you have learned that if you wish to cross over to Ternanog, you shall need the help of a mortal wizard who has long lived here in the wilderness. Recently, however, he was taken captive by zealot knights who call themselves sentinels. They are keeping him imprisoned in a place where his magic holds no power. You shall have to find your way through the deep wood and free this warlock. Okay. Sounds fair enough. No quoting, no speech. Fine. The deep wood. This forest is a rare deep wood that will fade into the other world of Tierno Nog in its darkest reaches. The trees and bu uh, bushes from form an almost impenetrable wall. You are certain that if I can reach the heart of the deep wood, I can go home. Now I hear the trickle of a stream. I follow the sound. It is coming from the south. I reach a small stream and go drink a mouthful of the clear water. The heart of the forest is still blocked from this direction. Even I can't cross those fawns. I have to go the long way round. I see animal tracks from the east that slowly turn to the south in a bend. Okay. I could either follow them or go straight south. I'll go straight south. Track leads me to the ruins of a strange building. It feels remarkably ancient, even to me and the grey stone slabs are covered with the faded carvings of heroes and gods long forgotten. Three pathways lead from this glade. I could go back to the north, I could go to the east, I could go south again. As you saw, I went south again. The track leads onto a narrow path that shortly separates into two separate dirt roads. An old signpost points down the roads, one to the east, the other to the south. But time and weather has long since erased the writings from the old board. Keep going south. I, cat I glimpse a solitary figure in the distance. As I draw closer, I see it's a hunter with a long bow on his back and a large knife tucked into his belt. He doesn't look surprised at my presence. He greets me with respect. Have you seen a hostile army in the forest? Hunter suggests I keep to the east, though it won't be easy. The forest is changing, he says, almost as though the trees and brambles were trying to reclaim all that has been all that was taken away from the woods. If I reach a boulder that resembles a giant old hag, I am close. Hunter said east, I trust him. I reach a cliff, blocking my way east. A long time ago, someone once carved a statue onto the rock. Now it's only blank, a blank, featureless lump of stone. Go south, I can go back west, or I can go north. I seem to be having good luck going south. This corner of the woods feels warmer and more humid. The ground is riddled with gaping holes, most of which fill slowly with churning, putrid mud. I don't really like this place. It feels as though it has been tainted with a poison seeping up from the very depths of the earth. I'll choose the path that leads back north, thanks. Uh, I'll go north. 
Road leads to yet another crossing. Under a nearby tree, I see a grave with a cross stuck onto the ground. One of the followers of that pecu uh, peculiar new faith must be buried here. Go east. I reach a sunny clearing housing a pretty cottage with a thatched roof. I knock tentatively on the door, but there is no answer. The building is clearly still occupied, but the inhabitants must be elsewhere. I take a look around the cottage. The door opens easily and I walk into a small, clean, tidy room. It seems to be the home of a hard-working woodcutter. Don't find anything of interest, so I leave. I go west. Uh, the road leads to yet another crossing. Under a nearby tree I see a grave. Oh, it's this area again. North. Trank leads me to a shallow valley covered with shrubs and fawns. Suddenly I hear a deep bestial growling. A huge bear is advancing towards me. Its massive, uh, the massive beast seems hostile. I charm the beast into a deep sleep. I weave ancient words of magic into a potent spell. I watch as the bear takes a few lumbering steps towards me. Then I wait as the beast falls to the ground, sound asleep. Now I can continue my journey in safety. I go to the east. The track gradually widens out into a beautiful clearing where the scent of flowers is almost overwhelming. It's an ancient, uh, it's a welcome sanctuary in this grim grey forest and I decide to take a short rest here. Continue my journey to the north. To my great surprise, the track suddenly leads me into a small glade, which seems to have appeared out of nowhere. A group of bone-weary mortal warriors have set up a camp here. They're so exhausted they don't even seem surprised to see me, but simply greet me cautiously. They can join my army. Soldiers know only too well that I am one of the Shi, a mistress of the deep woods and that I am their only hope of getting out of this forest after many long days spent fruitlessly wandering. Continue my journey to the east. Track leads me to a strange gnarled tree towering above the old greenery. The tree is an old, old blackened husk, dead for a very long time. I don't see anything else. East. The track leads me to a small glade with the ruins of a shack in the middle. The building seems utterly deserted. I also find a door that must lead to the cellar under the hut. Look around the shack. Most of the floorboards have rotted away and the remaining few creak loudly. This place must have been abandoned ages ago. In the corner I find a small box containing a dragon ring. It feels magical to the touch, so I take it. I open the door. I cut off the rusted lock and walk down the rickety stairs. The cellar has a musty, damp smell and is full of giant spider webs, but it's otherwise empty. I go back I walk back out into the fresh air and head south. I follow the track into a clearing with a huge flat rock in the middle. It's entirely overgrown with soft green moss. I decide to take a rest here. Which way did I go last time? South. I go south. I arrive at a crossroads where the path slits into three. I notice an unusually large patch of scorched dead grass. I continue my journey south. I arrive at a small rock bas basin filled with cold crystal clear water. Its rocky bottom is decorated with ancient runes carved into the stone. I immediately recognise this place as a gigantic scrying pool, a place where I can peer into, the dis into distant places and fates. I'll use it. I reach out with my thoughts and gently touch the runes with my power. Suddenly the water turns into a swirling milky morass. But once it clears, I can see the western pathway that leads to an empty guard host. From there, I can have to continue south to find the warlock. So west and south. I go west. A small group of autumn breed warriors are trying to fight back a large, better equipped band of sentinels. I arrive just in time to intervene on behalf of the autumn breed, and together we are victorious. The leader of the mortal warriors of the Shi is very grateful. What are you doing here, servants of the Shi? 
The Autumn Breed leader tells me that they are trying to return to Tir Nano. He has heard that there is a hostile army to the south who have kidnapped a warlock. He might prove useful in finding the way back. The leader also offers their help. I accept their help and together we set to the south. The path leaves the forest and I suddenly see a hostile army in the distance. I can't avoid confrontation, but I'm heavily outnumbered. It might be wiser to avoid open battle, then I'll have a chance. Mission Briefing The Autumn Breed Scouts have returned, Milady. The warlock we seek is held prisoner in the heart of the Sentinel camp. This strange place seems to dampen his magical powers and will have a similar effect on us, so we'll have to act quickly. The mortals have an overwhelming numerical advantage, but the majority are asleep, apart from a few watch posts and patrols. These should prove easy to outwit. Should the guards notice our presence, they'll head for the central watch post to alert the camp. We can't risk an open battle, so anyone who spots us must be hunted down and killed. Once we have the mortal wizard, we should withdraw immediately. It will be impossible to free him unnoticed. View the hero. So I have Venomous Curse and Aura of the She, plus a passive skill enchanted equipment. Artifacts wise, I have this. My fighting is 8, my magic is now 17. Close. And I'm only level one. Right. I have five winter breed and six autumn breed. What? Okay. So I quickly save for the for, before the fight. Save successfully. Start. What? Oh. No. Uh, view hero. I have enough. Oh, I see. Dragon's Breath, which would be useful. And I will say... Complete that. And get Hold. Hold could be useful. Close window. Start. Circles of light indicate the enemy's visual range. If I enter the dimmer edge, they might first investigate. Should they discover me, they will... 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 Don't you just love it when it cuts out their advice? Ah. If I enter their visual range, they might first move it to find out what they've seen, then should they discover me, they will likely run back to alert the main camp. Until they free the wall, and well, until I free the warlock, it's unlikely I could defeat the entire army. So it would be wise to keep my presence hidden and hunt down the patrols that detect me. Uh, there are many glowing objects in the area, such as spirit candles, which provide beneficial effects. To use these, simply select the unit who will interact with it, then click on the object itself with either mouse button. Some objects can only be used by heroes, while others can be used by units with charged abilities. Right. Lady Corrigan, you are group 1. My two melee goops, they are group 2. Oh. Right off the bat, I see a group there. What's your mana and what's your hit points? Mana's quite good. Venomous Curse slows them down so it'd be easy to stop them from escaping if need be. How many of you are there? How are keepers? Harvesters and keepers, eh? How much did that cost me? 45. That's not half bad. 
And I have a feeling they're trying now to escape. And failing, thankfully. Attack. Only two left. Oh good, and they're dead. I think I should probably take out this little thing, detachment. Closer before I start taking them out. Attack. Kill the keepers. And now they're trying to run away. Cowards. I will cast hold on you if I have to. left. Attack. Kill him! Kill him! Spell resisted? Kidding me! That was a pain in the arse. Where are these glowing objects that were mentioned? Yeah, I've got no mana left for you. What's this? Guys over here. Start teaching these guys what for. They're being keepers before. Who are they? Yes, who are these keepers and harvesters? Where's the last group? and more keepers. Yes, I'm already liking the Fallen Champions more. It's a bit more tactical and mission based. Rather than just flat out open warfare every time. Mind, I'm sure some people prefer the open warfare of nations more. Don't kill the keepers. I 
look around for these supposed glowing objects. That doesn't include the harvesters over there. Hello? See a small group over there coming towards me. What's this do? Uh, Fog of Avalon. That might be handy. Another hold? Shouldn't think so. They're still alive. Well, he's still alive. Infantry. Supposedly, this is a group of archers. My archers are superior. Come on, don't let them run away. Most of them don't even care to properly fight me. There's a stone circle over there. I see two patrols there. Yes, there's no escape for you. Might have been a little too hasty with my shots though. Please don't get to the main camp, I'm not going to be able to win otherwise. Yeah, I've just lost. I just screwed myself over. <laughs> 